Hi everyone, welcome to my Surface Pro 3 in-depth review. In this video, I will talk about the hardware, software, the changes Microsoft made to optimize the experience, as well as some hardware and software benchmarks. Let's get started. So in this third generation Surface Pro, Microsoft has mainly focused on improving the productivity side. Many of the improvements are focused on getting more done in the office or in class and getting more done on your lap. I'll talk more about that later. For now, let's start with the hardware design. So one of the biggest changes to the Surface Pro 3 is with its completely redesigned kickstand. With this new version, you can now open the kickstand at any angle between 0 and 150 degrees. And while doing that, you can stop the kickstand at any level in between. The device is also a lot thinner now, the same thickness as the Surface 2. It's also 100 grams lighter than the Surface Pro 2, clocking it at 800 grams now. Off to the right side, there is a mini display port, USB 3 port, as well as the dock and power connector. On the top, off to the left side, there is a power button, and there's also a plastic strip for better wireless connectivity. On the left, there is the headphone mic combo jack, a volume rocker. You also have a micro SD card slot underneath the kickstand, like you do with the Surface 2. On the bottom of the device, there's the usual keyboard connector. It's also power cover compatible. Another new feature you get with the Surface Pro 3 is now the keyboard can magnetically attach to the bottom bezel of the tablet. There is a five megapixel camera on the front and there's another five megapixel camera on the back both with in their individual microphones. This time around, the back camera is no longer angled at 22 degrees like it was with all previous surfaces, probably due to its multi-angle kickstand. On the bottom, there is the Surface logo. One of my favorite new feature of the Surface Pro 3 is its power connector. This time around, all you have to do is hold the connector somewhere near the port and the strong magnets will suck the connector in for you. It is a lot better than the old ones where you have to align it yourself. However, the same cannot be said regarding the new cooling system. This time around, Microsoft only fitted one fan in the device and they also used this new technology called radiant cooling. What it means is the fan blows 360 degrees around itself and never channels the air in a specific direction. This problem soon becomes apparent as the processor starts to throttle itself and the back of the device becoming really hot. There's also no airflow out of the device from the perimeter ventings. This new fan is a lot noisier than that of the Pro 2 and it doesn't do as good of a job. Another change Microsoft made to the Surface tablets is with its indent for opening the kickstand. Previously, you only get one indent on the left side of the device, but now you also get the identical indent on the right side of the device. So now you can open the Surface tablet from either the left side or the right side. However, the problem with this one is if you open it with one hand on one side, the tablet will wobble on the desk as the two hinges are not open at the same angle, as you can see here. The best way to open this kickstand is with both hands at the same time to ensure you have the same angle on both hinges. Microsoft used the Entrick digitizer for the Surface Pro 3. So this time you have this high quality pen with a metal body. The back end of the pen is made from plastic to ensure better Bluetooth signal for triggering OneNote.
The new screen is also optimized for note taking as it's now a 12 inch display with 2 by 3 aspect ratio which closely resembles the shape of a piece of lying paper. This new pen comes with a semi-soft tip for more natural writing experience. There are also two buttons on the side. The top one is for right click and selecting ink in OneNote, while the bottom one is for erasing ink. One thing that I'm a little worried is the glass thickness of this display. As you can see, the screen easily ripples as the pen glides on it. This glass is very thin. This time around, the speakers on the Surface Pro 3 are greatly improved. probably thanks to the front-facing speakers found on the sides of the bezel. As for the type cover for Surface Pro, the trackpad is greatly improved. It is a lot smoother for you to glide your fingers on, and you can also physically click the pad down for selecting. Out of the box, you also get this little pen holder, which you can use the included double-sided tape to tape onto your Surface Type cover. So this time around, you'll never have to worry about losing your pen. Also, on the opposite end of the pen holder, you have this nice little Surface logo on the back of the type cover, which is a really nice addition. The Pro 3 comes with Windows 8.1 Pro with Update. It's pretty standard except a few power management tweaks. First, the Pro 3 uses connected standby instead of the usual S3 standby. This allows the pen's Bluetooth to keep on working even when the computer is in sleep. Also, power options has been reduced to having only the balanced plan. There are also way less advanced options for you to configure. It's now similar to the Surface RT line. One advantage of the Surface's massive 2160 by 1440 resolution is you can now dock three apps side by side. It looks like there's room to dock the fourth app, however, when you try to move it in, it will kick off one of the three original apps. The Pro 3 comes with a solid state drive, so naturally it will boot very fast. Windows 8's fast startup also helps along the process by hibernating the system instead of fully rebooting. To demonstrate the performance without fast startup, we'll also do a restart time test. From the now hidden Windows Experience Index, we can see the Pro has a CPU score of 7.4, memory score of 5.9, graphics gaming score of 5.9, 3D graphics score of 5.4, and disk performance score of 8.15. These are really solid scores coming out of a sub 10mm tablet. 
From this PC Benchmark Modern Windows 8 app, we can also see the tablet has fantastic performance, even better than that of the Surface Pro 2. Network-wise, this computer features the newest wireless AC technology. And as you can see, the wireless adapter features ultra-fast ping performance. However, in a file transfer test from my local network storage to this tablet, the performance is far below expectation. The tablet was just a few feet away from the 1.7 gigabit AC router, but it only achieved just over 100 megabits. This tablet holds a 42 watt hour battery, which is about the same capacity as the Surface Pro 2's. Using the 36 watt power adapter, the tablet was able to charge to 94% in two hours and complete its charge from empty in just over two and a half hours. Thank you for watching my detailed review of the Surface Pro 3. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below. I will be posting a detailed comparison between the Pro 3 and the Pro 2. That video should be up tomorrow. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.